Hi guys, it's Brittany. Thank you so much for watching. Today I want to talk about sharing a hotel room or a studio apartment Airbnb with your baby or toddler. If you didn't know, basically my husband and I had the huge privilege of spending like the first year and a half basically of our son's life doing a lot of traveling and staying in a lot of hotels and Airbnbs in the US and Canada and in Europe. So today I want to share with you a lot of tips that have worked for us personally on our trips, but also tips that I've learned from other moms and from friends of mine who have traveled a lot with their babies and toddlers as well. These tips will cover sleeping, eating, and playing when sharing a hotel room with your baby or toddler. If you have any of your own tips or tricks, please share them in the comments down below to help us all out. And please remember to like this video if it helps you. The first thing you're gonna wanna do, of course, is to have a safe place for your baby to sleep at night while you're sharing a room with them. I know some parents who have traveled with their own travel crib, their own pee pod, or pack and play, but that just wasn't an option for us. It felt too cumbersome to carry a pack and play or or a travel crib with us when we were doing all sorts of traveling with our baby when we already had a whole bunch of other junk to carry with us. So we did not go this route, but it is a possibility. Instead, we always checked before we booked a hotel or an Airbnb that there was a pack and play or a crib or some sort of space for our baby to sleep in before we booked it. If you're finding that there is a hotel room or an Airbnb that you really wanna stay in, but there is not a baby bed available, you could always use a rental company. There are a lot of rental baby equipment companies out there. I'll I'll try to remember what they are or I'll put the names of them on the screen here while I'm editing this video. But basically you rent baby equipment like high chairs and baby beds and they deliver them to your hotel room or to your Airbnb where you're staying. So this could be a really great option for you. We haven't used this personally. I think I did look into it but they weren't available in the places that we were staying. I might get some flack for this next one but you could make a makeshift baby bed in your room depending on the age of your baby. I think it's even recommended for parents who don't have any any other place to put their baby to take out a drawer from a dresser and use that as a baby bed. So this could be an option in a hotel room as well. As our son's gotten a bit older, I would say after like 12 months, we did make little makeshift beds in some of our hotel rooms, just using an extra blanket or something from the hotel closet. And this worked out really well for us. Whenever we had the option, we were mat on the floor, kind of Montessori, I guess, people. We just like the idea of our son being able to get himself in and out of the bed, as long as the space around Around him is baby proofed and safe so if you think this might work for your family consider making a little makeshift bed on the floor during your trip okay and now speaking of controversial I want to talk about how you share a room with your baby or toddler and also get some adult time to yourselves so option one is the expensive option I guess the slumber pod which is essentially a blackout tent that goes on top of your baby's crib or pack and play. Quick note, I have heard that the knockoff versions of the slumber pod that you can buy on Amazon are not as good. I believe it comes with a little fan or you can put a little fan in it and you can slip your baby monitor inside so you can keep an eye on your baby of course. A lot of parents swear by the slumber pod. It is super 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 popular for traveling parents. My husband and I were honestly just too cheap to try this out even though it probably would have saved us a lot of heartache during our travels with our son. Look into this if you have the money, if this is an option for you, but I'll put a link down below. But what my husband and I did was the cheap version of this that I am sure, again, I'm gonna get flack for. So you can either have your baby or toddler take a nap while you're out and about on your vacation or on your trip in the stroller or carrier. But if you wanna go back to the room and relax but not necessarily sleep while your toddler is sleeping and you don't have any other quiet place to put them in and you don't have a slumber pod we used to and we still would again we just haven't stayed in a hotel room with our son in a few months put our son in a makeshift bed in the closet or in the bathroom. Now hear me out on this. We've done this many times and we've taken safety precautions, making sure there's nothing up above that could fall on our son, making sure the ventilation is good, making sure we have our monitor set up and using a sound machine. And this has worked beautifully for us in many hotel rooms that we've stayed in. The way I would do it is I would nurse my son to sleep and then transfer him into his makeshift bed in the closet or in the bathroom 
my husband and I would both pee first. We would make sure it was very safe, set up the monitor, and then close the door and he would take his nap while my husband and I were able to have a little bit of adult time in the rest of the room. I know this isn't gonna work for everybody and this might be kind of shocking for some people, I'm so sorry, but it worked so well for us and so if this helps you out, I'm happy to share this information with you. And if it was nighttime, we wouldn't leave our son in the closet or the bathroom all night long. He would just be in there for a couple of hours while we were hanging out and watching TV and then we would transfer him back into the main hotel room for the rest of the night. I don't think you should leave your child alone in the bathroom or in a closet for the entire night. If this sounds way too crazy or this is not an option for you, don't worry. You can put your baby to sleep in the main bedroom. Maybe you want to take a nap with them as well on your trip. In this case, I would suggest bringing blackout curtains with you. You can also find those on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. Or the, do the cheap version and bring plastic, black plastic garbage bags and painter's tape and just make your own makeshift blackout curtains in your hotel room. It doesn't take up a lot of space in your suitcase and you can guarantee that your hotel room will be nice and dark for your baby's nap time. Okay, and I guess the last thing I'll say on the topic of sleep is to bring a sound machine, a portable sound machine. I'll link ours down below. We use this little owl portable sound machine. Or if you play music or whatever, just have that downloaded on your Spotify so that you have that ready to put your baby to sleep. This might sound really obvious, but you wanna keep their bedtime routine as close to their bedtime routine is at home so even though they're in a space they're in a new place that's maybe a little bit scary or unfamiliar to them those sleep cues will still be the same they'll still be hearing the same sort of bedtime music or white noise and have the same comfort items like their blanket or their pacifier or whatever that they do at home and hopefully they won't have too hard of a time falling asleep and staying asleep in an unfamiliar place sound machines have just helped us out so much while traveling because you can never account for the kind of sounds or noise that they're gonna be hearing or just like me and my husband having conversations while my son is sleeping in the closet. So this has been really helpful for us. Surprisingly, our sound machine has also come in handy just like for stroller naps when it was noisy outside or in airports or even on the airplane itself. Okay, so let's talk briefly about eating while sharing a hotel room with your baby on vacation. A high chair for me was something that I found to be really important between the ages of like six months when he started eating until pretty recently because they just make such a huge mess while they're learning to eat you know this if you've ever had your child on their on your lap while they're eating they just get you all messy high chair is so 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 handy but traveling with a high chair isn't super convenient so i guess that's step number one check and see if your hotel or your airbnb has a high chair that you can use or you could use one of those rental companies perhaps to rent a high chair or you can do what we've done and purchase a travel high chair from amazon link down below it folds up and you can stick this into your checked bag i would say it takes up sort of a lot of room so it's not an essential essential thing but it is super handy to have your baby eats many times a day and it's just helpful for them to have their own little tray and chair and not be eating on your lap for every meal. We found it really handy to also bring his own little bowl, sippy cup, spoons, forks, just so we had these sort of baby items for eating that he was familiar with. Eating is a big part of your day, a big part of your baby's day, and it's nice to make the process go a little bit faster. Bibs, bring bibs with you as well. And I would recommend for cleaning these items to be able to clean them in a hotel room bathroom or or like when you don't have a full kitchen, just bring this little bottle of something called Camp Suds. This is soap that you can use for everything. It's shampoo, body wash, and also dish soap. You can use this to clean your dishes in any bathroom sink. It's for camping, but it has saved us during our travels. I'll put a link to Camp Suds down below as well if you're interested. And then of course, bring all of your baby's regular snacks and food that you know that they'll eat on vacation because they just might be a little bit picky when they're in an unfamiliar place and you wanna make sure you have something with you that you know they'll like. For play, for toys, you might think you don't need to bring any toys with you because you're going to a new and excited, exciting place. And that is true, but there are those quiet moments when you're in your hotel room when maybe you or you and your partner are feeling a little bit tired. You just want to rest a little bit and it's so nice to have something for your baby or toddler to play with when they're on the floor, when they've already exhausted all the options of playing with stuff in the hotel room. They've played with the phone for a while. It's so nice to be able to have like a couple of 
of puzzles or magnetic blocks or coloring books, water wows, something that they can play with on the floor to keep them inter entertained for a few moments in those quiet times on your vacation where you just wanna chill. I really hope these tips help you out on your next vacation or travels with your baby or toddler. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.